Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're talking about check valves that will be found in a wastewater system. So if you need help sizing or selecting the right check valve for your application, maybe this video will help. If it doesn't, feel free to give us a call and we're happy to help you out with that selection. So I've got a few different check valves in front of me here. This would be a ball check valve. We have a flapper style check valve. We have a spring loaded flapper style check valve. And then we have what would be most commonly found in your water well side of things, but a stainless steel inline check valve. And uh, this one particularly, so we'll start with this one. The reason that stainless steel check valves are becoming more commonplace in wastewater is we're getting more and more high head effluent systems out there, specifically for uh, on-site treatment of effluent, whether it's pushing high pressure into a drain field, et cetera, et cetera. So these check valves are much more suitable for those style of pumps, typically those high head pumps, look just like a well pump or they are a well pump, just with a different name to them. Um, so these handle those high pressures, these handle those um, high velocity fluids going through them and then when you're typically using a check valve like this it would be screened effluent only to prevent um, plugging up your check valve and or uh, plugging up your drain field. So these do have a place, they're non-corrosive, uh, capable of handling extremely high pressures and decent flow rates with minimal losses. Uh, another one here is this is the flapper style, actually it's a true union uh, flapper style spring assisted. So you can see when I shake this, you don't hear a flapper. I guess I should shake it next to the mic. Whereas the non-spring assisted just kind of flaps around in there. And that's because if this is mounted in a vertical position, gravity is just gonna have it falling down and closing naturally. So there's no real need to add more parts that could potentially fail. Now, spring-assisted check valves, they can be mounted both vertically and horizontally, and actually, interestingly enough, these can be mounted uh, horizontally as well, but you have to pay attention to uh, this end up. That way, it's, it's hanging in the proper uh, orientation so that it will close naturally. Um, but with the spring-assisted, they just basically have a tiny little spring, and you may or may not be able to see it in there, that uh, assists in closing this valve by giving it some additional leverage or some additional force. Uh, so these certainly have their place out there, but more commonly they're installed in places where they have to be mounted horizontally as opposed to vertically and they won't be assisted by that action, but they want to ensure a quick closing. And that's the biggest priority with the spring assisted is, is closing it as quickly as possible. The larger your sewer line gets or uh, the more flow that you're having uh, in a particular sewer line, the quicker you generally want your check valves to close to minimize water hammer, to minimize the amount of energy rushing backwards and slamming against that valve. That's going to increase the longevity of all the parts in your system. Um, so that's those two. In addition, I guess I, it's worth mentioning the true union aspect to this. I love true union check valves, especially in wastewater, where you can avoid having to cut any of your piping out to replace this. You simply could undo these unions on either side and either disconnect one side to inspect the check valve or disconnect both sides to replace this check valve wafer in here. Um, so it makes for servicing, replacing, inspecting your check valves very easy to do as opposed to something that's threaded permanently in place or more commonly uh, glued with a socketed connection. So these are definitely cheaper, more of just your throwaway style. If you suspect it's bad or you think it's bad uh, or you know it's bad, you're gonna cut it out and throw it away and get a new one or unthread it, throw it away, get a new one. Um, and then the last little guy on the list here, we've got, this is a ball check valve like I mentioned. Uh, you may have seen these more commonly. They're available in a uh, ductile iron or cast iron ductile iron. Um, and basically there's just a ball that's inside of this valve. And you can hear that. Uh, it's just a black uh, hard rubber ball that um, essentially when the pump comes on, the ball gets pushed up a channel and, and kind of hangs out over here all by itself until there's not enough flow to hold that ball up and then gravity just allows that ball to flow backwards. The biggest caveat with these, or the biggest negative portion, or uh, I don't know how, what you want to call it, but the, the, the stigma with uh, ball check valves is that over time, under the right conditions, that ball can become elongated or egg-shaped. They call it uh, egg in it, egg in the ball, or whatever you, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Uh, but basically what, that, what happens is 
that channel that the ball slides in is basically meant to be just the size of that ball. There's not a lot of room. So if the dimensions of that ball or it becomes to stretch and get egged, um, then it can go up and wedge into that channel and fail to fall backwards, which can lead to some pretty negative consequences if you have a check valve that's not checking and preventing the flow from coming backwards. Um, that can definitely lead to some costly expenses. So the big thing with the uh, ball check valve, as is true with any check valve, you want to make sure that they're operating, but these ones more so than a standard flapper check valve because that ball will get elongated over time. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's a matter of time. And then a person just simply needs to replace that ball um, on a fairly regular basis, whether that be annually or once every few years. It just depends on your system and it's gonna require some inspections to get an idea of what the status of that ball is. I think that flapper check valves tend to more often than not uh, fail with the flapper detaching and that's usually from high velocity situations um, where the where eventually it just tears that flapper free the my opinion on that is that when these tear free they oftentimes don't leave this kind of area and they'll usually cause a blockage in the line either on the discharge side or or return flow side and they'll oftentimes result in a high water level which is going to alert you that you've got an issue and the issue this problem can be addressed when a ball gets wedged inside of a uh, ball check valve however it essentially just moves the ball out of the way and you really have no idea that every time your pump kicks off everything is just coming back into your tank so it puts the pump into an overdrive situation where it's pumping a lot more than it was before and can lead to premature pump failure with no real easily identifiable conditions outside of when the pump turns off the liquid level rises because the water continues to flow backwards into the tank so um, I'd love to hear anybody's thoughts on that particular spiel that was a little bit outside the scope of just discussing what different types of check valves there are. Um, so hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully this helped you in identifying what check valve might be right for your application. Don't forget to leave those comments below. Like if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe as well. We will catch you next time.